Wow, you make a great George Washington. A spitting image of the portraits I have seen. That's because I am George Washington, risen from the dead. The voice seems convincing too. It has been exhilarating to come back from the dead and see how this country has changed in the 200 or so years since I was alive. Mostly for the better I think. Yes I think so, but there is one thing that has me puzzled. That the Secret Service would be so foolish as to let you on the White House grounds? No, you see. It's about the elections. Or not the elections themselves, but these things you call polls. Someone called a pollster arranges to have a 1,000 people interviewed and then predicts the election. All right, I'll play along. Of all the things you might be amazed and puzzled by in the 200 years since you have graced the earth, you choose polls? Yes. Even in my day, when only white men with property could vote, I just don't see how you could predict the votes of thousands based on just 1,000 people. And now today you have more than 100 million people voting, and you can predict an election by interviewing 1,000 people? I do not understand. I see. So a Washington impersonator breaks onto the White House lawn so he can ask the president a statistics question. All right, I'll play along. Look, you can't predict an election with just any old sample of 1,000 people. The sample has to be collected in a particular sort of way. It is really important for the sample to represent the population of likely voters, for one. Right. Nowadays, you couldn't have only white male property owners in your sample. To say the least. Race matters for voting, as does gender, and a host of other things including political party of course. If a pollster collects a sample that looks like the population in the ways that matter for voting, he or she can often do a decent job predicting the election. That is, provided the election isn't too close. And to do this, the pollster needs to collect a probability sample. What is that? For a probability sample, the pollster has some basic list of the population and selects from it in such a way that she knows the probability of selecting any particular person in that population. All right, so you collect a probability sample. Sorry to interrupt, but I am the president now. I should also mention that a lot of times, samples don't end up being all that representative. For example, women are more likely than men to do surveys. So typically women are overrepresented in surveys. Oh that's right. Women can vote now. So what do you do? Discard the responses of the extra women? Well actually, pollsters typically end up adjusting responses in a process called weighting. In this process, responses of less well-represented respondents count for less and the responses of overrepresented respondents count for more. If someone belonged to a group that was particularly underrepresented in the survey, that person might end up counting as much as two or three normal respondents. With waiting, pollsters can make their samples more representative of the voting public. Fair enough. But what has me stumped is this. Say, for example, you take a poll of 1,000 people and you find out that 55% of the voting public would support an undead George Washington for president in 2016. Uh, running against Hillary? I don't think so. Who knows? But let's say the poll says I will get 55% of the vote. Unless people change their minds, can I count on winning? Not necessarily. Whenever I see a poll, I don't pay as much attention to the estimated percentage of voters who support me. It's only an estimate from a sample, and estimates from samples are not likely to be exactly right. What I pay attention to is the confidence interval. Go on. Well, according to statistical theory, if you collect a probability sample, you can estimate a margin of error and with that margin of error, you can estimate a confidence interval. Typically, we use the 95% confidence interval, but one could estimate a 99% confidence interval. Armed with a 95% confidence interval, you can say that 95%, 19 out of 20 times, the true percentage of people who support you in the population, will be somewhere within a range of numbers. 
to take your ridiculous example, say 55% support an undead George Washington. With simple math, you can estimate a confidence interval based on the size of your sample. The larger the sample, the smaller the interval will be. With a sample of 1000, the confidence interval is typically plus or minus 3 percentage points. So with such a sample you could say with 95% confidence that an undead George Washington, if he existed, would receive between 52% and 58% of the vote. Uh -huh. So 19 out of 20 times my true support would fall within that range? Yes. In my day, I didn't have to do almost any campaigning. All of this fundraising nonsense is a waste of time. If I decide to run, I want to be more than 95% confident that I would win. Well, you could look at the 99% confidence interval. But if you want more confidence, your precision goes down. A 99% confidence interval for a sample of 1000 will give you a margin of error of plus or minus 4%. More confidence, less precision. Hmm. So with 99% confidence, I can say I would get 55% plus or minus 4%. So I would win between 51% and 59% of the vote. I could still predict winning. Yes, right, since you would still be predicted to get more than 50% of the vote. Not bad for an undead president, but what does it say about the country? Never mind that. Now say I want to be almost certain. I want to use a 99.99% confidence interval. I'd have to do the calculation, but I think your margin of error would be plus or minus 6.2%. Damn it. That doesn't leave me with a winning prediction. My 99.99% confidence interval would be between 48.8% and 61.2%. It might be best to collect a larger sample. You can reduce the confidence interval that way. Well, 95% confidence is good enough for me. I'm going to run in 2016. You should probably run now as there are Secret Service agents about to tackle you. I have only been talking statistics with you to hold you at bay until they arrived. Whether you are really an undead George Washington or just a figment of your own imagination, we can't have you running around the White House lawn like this. I hope you don't mean that. I was going to ask for your support before Hillary did. Not a chance.